this video today, we will be discussing the history of Tramadol and its potential to be used in low doses as an antidepressant. What's up everyone? This is your daily dose of mental health. Let's jump right on into it. Please like and subscribe. And I put together a real quick, um, just history on the history of Tramadol and some interesting results that I found in a study. And there's multiple others that I'm, I'll put in the links later. Let's jump right on into it. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It should be in that right hand corner. We're gonna keep on putting out more uh, information. This is gonna be a quick video. I just got off work, so here we go. Sorry if you can't read in that bottom uh, part, but I'll read it to you. So here we go. The history of tramadol as we start right here. So it was created in 1962 um, by a German drug company. Um, it was then tested for 15 years. Um, and brought to the market under the name Trammel. Um, today we call it Tramadol or Ultram, but it was brought to the market as Trammel. And what I mean by the market, it was the foreign market. This was not brought to the United States at this time. So it was the foreign market, so this would have been more so the European market. Um, it was initially, and still to this day, used as a pain reliever at this time. Um, they did studies on it, um, and obviously it is a synthetic, um, drug. I went, I discussed the difference between opiates and opioids, and it is a synthetic drug um, that has mul that has multiple um, uses and dualities that they're finding out to this day, which we'll discuss a little later. Um, so in 1995, so move a little forward in time from 1962 to 1995, it was brought to America. And at this time, it was not a controlled substance. Um, it was actually, it was not, it was non-controlled. You still did require, it did require a prescription, but it was not a controlled substance. So at this point, we had, we started to understand that Oxycontin, um, hydrocodone and things were highly addictive. So we, at this time, physicians were saying, you know what, this could be a positive impact. It's a non-controlled substance. Um, and it could be, it's effective for pain, so why not go for it when you have the positive revol results? So in 1995, um, it was brought to America. After this, there was a rapid increase in prescriptions from 2008 to 2012, which, what can you guess, can what can you conclude from this? So anytime you have a rapid increase in prescriptions, um, there is a higher chance of it becoming an abused medication. So. In 2014, it went from a non-controlled prescription to a schedule right here, schedule four. Schedule four, sorry, I'm bad at this, schedule four medication, which it is to this day. And that was in 2014. Um, so how I look at this is the big question revolves around um, the increase in prescriptions, which could have led to, which obviously led to it being more popular, and it became more popular on the uh, streets as well, um, which led to the biggest thing was to make it cheaper, they were lacing it with fentanyl. So they were taking a lot of those 50 milligram tablets a lot of times, and a 50 milligram tablet in order to um, get more out of it, they were starting to lace it with fentanyl. When this started happening, this is when obviously as I said, in two th that was happening in around 2014 when they're like, okay, we gotta do something. People are overdosing on tramadol. Um, but what was really happening as well with it was, yes, there were people who were starting to abuse the medication and using higher doses. But one of the main things is, you gotta remember is, it was effective for pain and a lot of even drug users on the street, you know, if they're using Draw, you know, if they're using multiple things, their bodies beat down that they're going to want something that alleviates pain. And this was a new drug on the street because hydrocodone and oxycotton, or oxycodone, was a lot harder to get with the EA crackdown. So they started with tramadol and they were lacing it, of course, with fentanyl. Comes over from China. Um, which, in my opinion, leads to the big question on its potential to be continue to be used as pain um, and its other medical uses. So I found some a very interesting study, a 2021 that I'll get into, but the main thing is 
that I want to just conclude before I go into the study is tramadol should not be classified. Um, and this it's hard to read down here. Tramadol should not should not be classified due to its antidepressant effects. So logistically, it has, and I'll just write right here, it has. So it obviously affects dopamine, which is your brain, these are your brain receptors. That's what, again, like pain meds, dopamine um, help, but it all, and this is like oxycotton, oxycodone, hydrocodone only affects dopamine, but hydrocodone, I mean, um, tramadol affects dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, Nephrine. Now that's hard to read, but it's norepinephrine. Um, these three. Um, so there are drugs to this day that are used to treat depression that are considered SS, SSNRIs, which are serotonin, norepinephrine, which you have these two, reuptake inhibitors like Welbutrin. Now you'd say, well then why wouldn't it be, why can't it be used as an antidepressant? When you add this dopamine aspect into it right here, anything, and I know that's hard to read, anytime you have a rush of dopamine, people are gonna go, now whoa, 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 whoa. That that right there, that, that, can, that can lead to drug addictions. But remember though, that things like caffeine, um, anything, gambling, anything that's pleasurable to you, sex, leads to a dopamine rush. And once again, I'm not saying that that not everyone will become addicted. I had my own problems um, with this medication for a while. Um, as I've told you, if you follow my journey, which I'll leave a link to my own recovery. However, I still see its use, why it could be used in low doses. So my big point is, if it, if it is affecting dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, and has SSNR, um, SSNRI, um, properties, why couldn't it be um, non declassified or you could keep it as a schedule for, but you use it as a treatment for depression as well. Because there are multiple meds like Lyrica. There are, there's Lyrica that is a control for, that is used for neuro, uh, neuro, uh, neuro, neuro pain, is it nerve pain. Um, and also it is um, used to treat pain. So you either declassify it or you keep it at a schedule four and you have it as a use as an antidepressant. So this 2020 study, which I know is hard to read, um, showed, and I'll, and I'll link the study. To the 2020 studies showed that low dose tramadol, so anywhere from 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams a day, um, were reported to be effective to very effective um, from an, um, in assisting and helping with, you know, depression. So it was effective as an antidepressant. In fact, 123 out of 130, which was 94, 94.6% uh, of participants in this study in 2020 reported that it was an effective or very helpful, um, a helpful um, medication that assisted with depression. So I guess the way we look at this and once again, I know there are some people who might be like, whoa, 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 you had your problems with meds like this. Yes, but I'm looking at the grand spectrum of if there are medications that are showing positive results and in a key word is, key word is lower, I'm just gonna write it here, lower, lower doses, lower doses, or even micro doses, if it's showing positive results to everyone for um, for participants, as in this one, because the key to this one was key word is in this study is low dose tramadol use. It doesn't say oh continue to go up. If if it can be used in lower doses and managed in that way, it should be um, used as an anti. It should be a treatment for depression. As we know today, as I was saying the suicide rate among teens and adults is only skewing and increasing. Um, if you look at the trends as of, I know 2020 um, into 2021, 
there was a three there's a three x in the amount of suicides happening, um, and how many in how many and there's at least you know it's three fourths of America ha, um, currently has you know has depression um, and whatnot and have tried multiple medications even trying things like ketamine for PTSD and depression that why not why not give tramadol a shot at um, being an assistance for depression and helping with depression. Um, I was very interested in making this video due to my own history with it and keeping an open mind and perspective of it. But also I was talking, I've been talking to, um, shout out to Jamie in the comments for putting some good questions out there. And I've actually thought about some of these things myself about tramadol. Um, I was talking to a doctor today about why is tramadol not used as an antidepressant when it has SSNRI, SSNRI properties. And what he was saying was, he's not actually, um, he, he's, he has no problem with it as long as it is in lower doses from 50 to 100 milligrams. I showed him the study. It's just a matter of getting other doctors and the boards on board with it. And I think this would be a great way to assist with lowering the suicide rate and having more um, potential um, uses for not only pain, because a lot of times when people are in pain, they have depression on top of it, and it affects their mental health, but in particular, assisting with depression. Um, once again, thank you for watching this uh, video, the history of tramadol and its potential to be used as an antidepressant. Um, in the next video, we will be discussing, in the next video, we will be going, discussing and going back to um, opiates and opioids. I did a basic education on it, but I'll be discussing, um, I'll be going more in depth than that in regards to um, its own properties and, you know, the addict, you know, why it, why it can lead to addiction, to addictive, um, why it can lead to drug addiction. Um, and also some of the best um, ways to alleviate if you're withdrawing or trying to get off of that medication, some of the best ways to get off of opiates and opioids um, it's a, if it's affecting you negatively or if you've been abusing them. Once again, this is your daily dose of mental health. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I love you all. Leave a comment. Um, if there's any uh, a topic you want me to cover or whatnot, just leave a comment down there and I'll get back to you. Um, I sometimes put just random videos out everywhere, but just I'm gonna continue to just putting out videos for everyone. I love you all. Um, look out for the next video. I will post this study um, as well, so you can um, so you can see it. Have a good week. I love you all.